Welcome to Genuine Life Recovery. We're here to help you and your loved ones overcome addictions and other addiction-related mental health challenges. In this show, we dive into the physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual aspects of addiction, mental health, recovery, family dynamics, codependency, and more. You can listen on your favorite app or at jodystevens.org. Genuine Life Recovery is made possible by great friends like Joshua's Heart in memory of Joshua Brent Moore, bringing hope, love, and awareness to those afflicted by addiction online at joshsheart.org and Jody Stevens Productions for commercial voiceover, narration, production, MC, and public speaking online at jodystevens.org. Hey friends, welcome back. And today we are talking about Celebrate Recovery, what it is all about, why it might be a great fit for you or a loved one in the recovery process. We are going to probably share a few Alaska stories too, (laughs) because I'm joined by my lifelong friend, Lisa Weiss Williams. We grew up together in Anchorage, Alaska. Our moms were best of friends. Um, Lisa helps transform people, you know, transform their finances while changing their life at the same time. But she's also part of Celebrate Recovery. So, Lisa, it's so good to see you again. Welcome. Hello, my friend. It's so we always have so much fun, don't we? We need to do this more often. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I was recently on your podcast, and we were talking about Alaska, which really is just an adventure. You know, growing up there. I when I look back, I realize what an adventure I lived. You know, I'll tell my husband the crazy stories about snow and how we all had sandbags. Because you'd be in the middle of the street and you'd, you'd, sli- you'd have to stop and get your sandbag out and, and like start sanding the street for people. Well, and be careful <laughs> right? of it's the crazy. moose that might cross in front of you too. And yeah. your babies as well. <laughs> Yeah, but we did a lot of stuff growing up. I was thinking the other day, I did, wasn't raised quite as much in the faith as you, but remember Victory Bible Camp? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Do you remember that, I cute, love that. that cute counselor that everybody had a crush on? He had a, he had a beard. Oh, my gosh. He was so cute. Yes, I remember that <laughs> camp. Of course, I go to the boy. You know, that's where I go first. She, Lisa always had the cutest boyfriends. <laughs> and then we canoed the Yukon, and she had a boyfriend there, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> like, well, oh, Joachim so from Germany. Well, you know what's funny, oh. Jody, is right now, what, it's very present for me because Sierra is that age where, where yes. the age that we yeah. were. You know, I have my girl is 15. And in fact, she just, she actually has her first little boyfriend. And it's, Mm-hmm. Isn't it interesting how we kind of, whatever phase of life, we sort of almost relive it in some ways yeah. so, through the people that are that we meet and the, the books yeah. we read and the podcasts we listen to, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You're kind of looking at her going, mm, I know. I know where you're at. <laughs> I've been there, you know. Uh, it, so if you grew up in Alaska and you have a proclivity towards addiction, Alaska can be a, a very dangerous place. Now, you luckily did not become an alcoholic like I did. I've been sober, oh my gosh, 18. I can't even ever remember if it's 17 or 18 years. But, you know, I, I would say we both drank and it was present everywhere we went, every party, everything. And I was probably 14 when I started, I mean, would you say, was that about your oh, age yeah. or were you I even mean, younger? I mean, remember the brown jug? You would walk in, in literally yeah. your letterman's jacket that says what year you graduate high school. And they would <laughs> they would sell you, at the time it was, you know, boons and wine coolers, those <laughs> really awful tasting things, right? Um, yeah. And you talk about addiction. I mean, it's interesting because just because mine didn't manifest in maybe alcohol or drugs or other things, I definitely have addictions. I have addiction Mm -hmm. to um, approval, caring what other people think. I have addiction. I I battled with food addiction in college Mm -hmm. and we can talk about that. It kind of came back again when mom died. Mm. Um, I, I, I battle with codependency. I mean, these are all, it's one of the things I love about Celebrate Recovery is you're there as a, as a believer, Christ-based 
program and you're just dealing with all your hurts and hangups, <laughs> which every one of yeah. us has things like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. And, you know, codependency, if you're to look at the base definition, is what they call like having an external locus of control versus internal. And what that basically means is that your identity, you don't really know who you are until other people approve. So your identity is determined based on things outside of ourselves, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, like, does, does Lisa like me? Do I do good at my job? How is my performance? Whereas the definition of, of identity is supposed to be something that we get not only in Christ, right, but it's something he gives us that's stable, yeah. regardless of what's going on around us. Yeah. Now, how many of us can say that we live like that? So when you talk about hurts, habits, and hangups, we're all kind of codependent, right? But it just depends on how deep is that? Like, do you, is it so deep that I've got to enable the alcoholic and fix everything or, you know, live with this abuse because it determines who I am? You know what I mean? So I don't know how deep that was for you, but yeah. I'm sure as you've been in that recovery process, you start to kind of see that, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think, you know, I think the closer I know that the closer I get to Christ, the closer I mm -hmm. get to really truly believing that I am his masterpiece, that it, that it tells yeah. us we are, I like to say we are his best idea. And how mm -hmm. many of us are living as though we are God's best idea? Very few of yeah. us. I know for years I, I was in the same job. You and I have talked about this a lot. That yeah, oh, yeah. for a long time yeah. I really loved. But then probably a good five years I didn't. In fact, I, I really mm -hmm. didn't like it. And yet I, I stayed because who knows? The golden handcuffs, the what I, how much I cared about society and what they thought, you know, what do you mean she's leaving this great corporate career to pursue mm -hmm. what <laughs> exactly? Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I kind of did the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you were very successful, I think, you know, financially in that corporate world. And so that can become your identity. I was successful as, Oh, it's Jody Stevens from the radio. Oh my gosh. Hey, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> right. the money part. Well, that's a whole other story, <laughs> but again, it was my identity. And I remember praying, thinking I could never leave this. Mm -hmm. I could never walk away from being this whatever. And then somehow, some way I did it. Like I just did it before I was even ready. And I think you did too. And, and there was like this crucifying period of, oh, <laughs> you know, who am I and what do I do without that identity? And that's, you know, when we get into recovery, a lot of people with, whether it's drinking, all those things, you kind of have to go through that crucifixion process, right? And I think if you can come to the other side, that's when we become free because we don't need all that approval, but it's a grueling process, you know? Yeah, I actually, I actually got, um, there's a real thing. I got certified in approval addiction. It's part of my <laughs> financial coaching practice because I, I teach people how to invest differently. I, I like to call it the mm -hmm. kingdom way to invest versus the status yeah. quo way to invest. And a big mm. part of it is overcoming what we think, the what everybody else is doing, you know, the worldly way right. of doing things. And there is, there is a prep, you know, a really big challenge that we face as humans because we all care deeply about what society thinks. And so yeah. overcoming that is a big part of what yeah. I'm doing at Cele Celebrate Recovery, as we all are. Yeah, right. And we're supposed to care, of course. We're supposed to love, be compassionate, put on all the the pieces of love and the shoes of the... <laughs> I'm doing that, uh, the armor of God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a Bible all... study right now. Yeah. So I'm like, do I get my shoes and my breastplate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
But Lisa, what what so what led you into Celebrate Recovery for Comfortable Sharing? You know, was it yeah. something that you started to look at the past of your dynamics? Because we were telling stories of our our dads at Christmas and getting drunk and you know things like that. We all know the family history in my family. Um, or was it you know you don't you don't have to have some kind of past trauma for some people. It's more current circumstances. Was it that or maybe kind of a mixture yeah, of both? It was definitely. I, I mean, certainly my history with my my dad and his drinking that that by the way he yeah. has overcome which I'm so yes. proud of him yes. that he has in fact it's funny if you ask daddy to this day he probably would say he he did he wasn't an alcoholic but he definitely was um, allergic to alcohol because um, he would he would have those Mom always knew if he wasn't in his ta- his seat at the dinner table at a certain time, okay, I guess Dan's gone out and he's bought, you know, the the bar a whole couple of rounds, right? And so daddy was not, yeah. it was a very, it was kind of a um, every once in a while, but it was a very extreme, yeah. always on the holidays, as we know, right? It led yeah, to, and they call that... Um... It, it led to many fun family vacations that they planned while they were drinking, right? We we benefited from yes. that. But it's interesting because well, mm-hmm. as I got older um, and I was dealing with my own, I went through a, a challenging divorce where I do, yeah. I remember alcohol playing a big part of mm. kind of some destructive behaviors that we both had, quite frankly, right? Um, yeah. yeah. And I did... I got to switch husbands to get my girl. I have two beautiful boys with my previous husband, and he's an awesome guy. We have a wonderful, crazy blended family. That's a that's a whole other story about God blessing me with forgiveness. Um, yeah. But as as I as I look now, what brought me to it really, quite frankly, is my own um, decision that I get to stay on my side of the fence. That I mm-hmm. I've become. A, a, just a student of self-development and how can I be the best version of me and I'm growing a lot and so what I'm mm-hmm. what I'm willing to accept as something that is just part of my life is is becoming a lot less um, you know I, I'm willing to accept a lot less than I was a couple of years ago in terms of behavior. Mm-hmm. So I found it as the best tool that I could own my part and really just not be a doormat, but also make sure that I don't, I do whatever I can not to repeat the pattern in my daughter. Um, because right. we tend to, if we don't, if we don't fix our part, it, it's, it's just an example for them of, mm-hmm. you know, what's acceptable. Right. And it's, you know, it's interesting. We all have our addictions. I don't think my addiction to food, for example, or, um, or maybe excessive spending, which I, I definitely struggle with that too, is any worse than, than my family, you know, members that are drinking or other things just might manifest a little bit differently, you know? in the family. Diet. Well, and so often when, yeah, so often when you give up the alcohol, then I struggle with the food addiction too, and the shopping addiction. And if we don't get to the root of it, which is generally that, um, the self-esteem and, yeah. and just being, you know, the identity, just being okay with who I am living in the moment, right? All those, all those concepts, if we don't get to the root of it, we're just going to switch addictions. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's so common, but it's interesting what you said about just sweeping off your side of the street doing what you can you know and and so often you know we hear this thing about oh you can't change anyone else but yourself but the interesting thing is once we do change ourselves a lot of times those loved ones around us do begin to change because they're reacting to our healthier behavior and our lack of being a doormat so then they do change so really I would say if you do want to change someone else start here, All right? right I mean, have you noticed since you've been doing this that there's been little shifts? Oh, 100%. I mean, oh, good. Just simple things like really 
being intentional when mm -hmm. I ask questions, making sure that it's about it's about what I I am curious about. I'm just curious. Tell me more. Things that are as opposed to asking questions with almost like an agenda, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're trying to learn, learn, understand, mm -hmm. and that that's the best way to, to help people mm -hmm. is is okay. She's listening. She hears me. She understands. You know, so, so that's, I mean, that's like what a therapist does, and that, I mean, and that, that's why. Well, <laughs> you know, we gotta we gotta love, learn, and understand. You know. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because my um, my husband, when we met, he had he's English. He's from England, mm -hmm. and his his faith lens was literally weddings and funerals, you know, from the, the movie. And when we got married, he knew how much my faith was a part of my life and, and that I wanted a partner to walk that, that way with me. And thank God mm -hmm. that we've, we've had that foundation. Now, my faith journey has gotten much, much deeper, which I also love celebrate recovery for that because it's only continued to strengthen what was already a very deep yeah. faith but what's interesting that's happened since even that is the more i release um the, my my family to god the yeah. more blessings are coming you know uh we're doing right now we're doing and have you heard of alpha the alpha program mm. it's a no, really I, great I so. it's an international program for um for families and especially new believers and they have a program locally where they're doing a teenager version so a high school version and the parents oh nice and we so the three of us are going and it's unbelievable what's happening because yeah. i feel like oftentimes i think Oh, there's no way he could possibly be as deep in his faith as me. I just can't picture it. And yet I'm I know that there's nothing that God can't accomplish, right? Yes. So I just need to get out of his way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And find that purpose in it too. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in the whole recovery process is, you know, we talk about like the steps and the steps are great and they tell us how to live and what to do but we need something to replace it with. So if I remove the booze and the approval addiction and everything else, what goes in next? Yeah. And so once we find that, I mean, I think that's the key and that's the biggest piece of the God centered program. And that's why we need the Lord so much is he gives us the real replacement mm -hmm. as opposed to, Oh, if I quit drinking, I'm going to take up running and I'm just going to run until I'm, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, I mean, that's so important D describe, to people, and I know you've probably never been to a regular 12-step meeting, but just from your own experience, kind of the difference between um, just sort of regular 12 steps and what Celebrate Recovery is. And if you don't know yeah. totally the answer no, to I that, can, I can fill in the blanks. I, can, I ha actually have been to a 12-step, um, and I had, okay, gone good. To, yeah. I had gone to Al-Anon as a teenager with yes. my mom oh, as well. I love that. Um, so I have a lot of my, I guess the lens that I love about Celebrate Recovery, it is, it is very Christ-centered. Um, yeah. And yeah. for mm -hmm. me, that just, even though when I was in the other programs that weren't necessarily Celebrate Recovery focused, my higher power was Jesus. I was thinking that. Yeah. But yeah. there's something pretty amazing, you know, when you, when you're all there for the singular purpose of overcoming whatever. And you're all, yeah. you're all looking up, you're all talking to the same higher power and believing in mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know, we have, we start ours because there, because I will say, and I'm sure you agree also, which group you go to does, you kind of have to shop around. Yeah. I feel like, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember I went to one and it was, there was an, only sex addicts and por pornography addictions in the room, I felt like. And I was like, I think, I feel like I get to find a different room. This isn't resonating with me, right? Um, but it's, so I think you get to mm -hmm. also give yourself the grace of finding the right one. And with, I mean, with Zoom these days, I think it's, 
better in person, which I am going in person, but I know there's a lot of options online for people too, right? To shop around as well. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And it is wonderful because it is totally Christ-centered. And for those of you that may be thinking, you know, should I go to a 12-step group, celebrate recovery? Here's the deal. First of all, the 12 steps were founded on the Bible. It was the Oxford group. So it was a Christian group that put them together. And that's why there's so many scriptures that go along with the 12 steps. And then Saddleback Church, which is kind of, I think, more close to where you live, they started um, Celebrate with Rick Warren. And then I forget the guy who like actually founded it. But anyway, they took the 12 steps and condensed them into eight principles. So it's really the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they all have scriptures that go along with it. It's just that whereas if you go to AA, some people worship Christ, some people are um, worship whatever, you know, there's just all these different faiths and it's very different. Whereas if you want something totally Christ centered and then with, with celebrate, they call it hurts, habits, and hangups. So what were some of the steps or principles or maybe the most impactful thing that you experienced in there where you're just sitting there and you're like, Oh, like, did you have any light bulb moments? Oh my gosh. So many. Well, it's interesting because you come in through whatever lens you're looking to overcome yourself, right? So for me, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it, it's ironic because I am a literally a, a wealth and investing coach, and yet I'm there yes. for my own addiction to overspending, you know, and mm -hmm. and so <laughs> and yeah. it's interesting how I would say the aha moments for me are. I love when we get to hear the testimonies. The testimonies yeah. are mm -hmm. mir miraculous. I can't wait till I get to give give mine. I feel like there's so much power in the testimony of others and seeing literally firsthand how um, if you keep showing up, the steps will work. Yeah. You know, as long as you work them, and how just situations where you, you would think how on earth would they ever overcome this but god right yeah. and so those testimonies and i find we have you know in our group we have small group where we get together men and women separately and those small groups you it's it's a it's a really powerful thing jody don't you think to to get to speak and share what you want to share without someone trying to fix it because it's a yeah. you really um there's no feedback there's no comments you know it's part of the the rules so to speak is you mm -hmm, sh mm -hmm. you share and then you say thank you for letting me share and that's it no one's recommending yeah. a book for you or oh you should listen to this podcast or i have a therapist you literally it's very rare that you have yeah. What other environment do you live do you do you live in in this on this planet where you just get to share and nobody tries to fix it? Right. Yeah. Very well and very that's, rarely. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. And and fixing it is like bad and that's one of the really key things with recovery is when we share our testimony and we have some, you know, people looking back at us in non-judgment, right? So, so, so that's part of like the step four where we make our moral inventory, the step five where we confess where, you know, we're just, we're sharing all this stuff and we have people looking back at us with love, support, and no, no judgment. And that's super healing. That's yeah. so, 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 so healing. And what I love about it, I always say, so the steps are kind of, you know, we, we basically admit that we're powerless. Then we reach out to God to help us, right? And then we, we take sort of a moral inventory of ourselves. We sweep our side of the street off. We give back. These are, these are parts of the steps, not necessarily in that order. But my favorite thing about step one, what I always say, so in Alcoholics Anonymous is admitted we were powerless over alcohol that our lives had become unmanageable. I always tell people, admitted we were powerless over sin, that our lives had become unmanageable. Yeah. 
No. Right. And that pretty much covers because, you know, the Bible says all of creation is groaning, mm -hmm. right? Everything. So whether you have a mental health disorder, because our, our neurons, our biology, our neurotransmitters, the, the birth process, natural, does that like it's all corrupt and everyone's looking for an answer like, what's the cause of all of it? It's like everything and all of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, and I love what you just said about um, about sin and also the lens of of looking at the Bible also and self-development. You know, example, yeah, in, yeah. I mean, in my world, nowhere in the Bible does it, does it speak about retirement, right? Um, I believe mm -hmm. we all have a core human need, which is to create an impact, to make an impact. And... I realize as I've stepped into the next the next chapter of my life, my my impact gets to be about sharing the good news more with more of a sense of urgency around the good news mm -hmm. of Jesus and the yeah. the great commission. I mean, it's isn't it interesting when you think about we were we were raised at Amazing Grace Lutheran and I still go to a Lutheran church and we we kind of have you know how it is. We're, we're I like I sit in the same row on the right hand side, three rows back. It's yeah. very, right, kind of systematic. And what I've just really been exploring and discovering is that um, there's parts that I have been missing about my faith. That mm -hmm. I'm just because the Lutheran lens doesn't really highlight those, right? So yeah, that's another thing that Celebrate Recovery has given me, and quite frankly, just my entrepreneurial journey of self-development yeah. is that we get to keep learning, we get to keep growing, we get to create, still continue to make an impact, whatever that looks like, and never stop. And why would we, yeah. right? And, I, and so yeah. I, I love that because it's a group of people that are owning their shit, pardon my French, yeah. and, yeah. and really just making a decision, planting their flag. I'm planting my flag that I get to get better every day. And I get to start mm -hmm. with figuring out what I'm, what I get to fix and with his help, yeah. right? Well, and there's a, just a wonderful, it's brave, it's bold when we step out, you know? It's like when we moved here and, and uh, I had to join a Bible, I didn't have to join a Bible study and I didn't even, I was like, Ugh. and then I'm like, just do it. Just right. stop thinking about it, you know? And that's what following the Lord is, right? Putting on those, those shoes, the gospel shoes, where it's like, it's like, okay, surrender. Like the, the word he keeps giving me is just give it up, give it up, give it give up. Give it up. And you know, also, just surrender and, and just follow you. Follow <laughs> and where are we going? <laughs> and Jody, you re I, I can't remember if I told you this, but this would be a good way to wrap things up because yeah. I, you mentioned the Bible study. I'm going to, I get to lead my Bible study today. And do you know, yes, that I've got to let you go so you can do but it. Do you know that a year ago, this Bible study I decided I too was like, I get to be in more of a weekly purposeful group of women that are yeah. all right. So I joined this Bible study. I wrote a book and I don't even have a copy. Oh yes, I do. I wrote a book. Oh. Jody knows. Um, it's called conversations with an angel. And I, I wrote this book after the loss of my best friend and my mom. And it's, mm. it's a, it's a fantastical book. It's a made up story about a woman that loses her best friend and she starts to visit her as an angel and they get to have conversations the rest of her life right so i gave this book to my bible study leader lat a year ago she read the book and she actually questioned whether i was a believer and i almost got kicked out of my bible study <laughs> and it's just so interesting because god was so good I mean, had I not done the work on myself at, up until that mm -hmm. point and worked so much on not giving a rip what other people think, I would not have been right. able to stand my ground and stand my truth and, and have a conversation about the book, right? And now a right. year later, this, this Bible study has meant so much to me. Oh. It's done so much in my life. And so just think about the things that sometimes we... We give up because we're afraid or we're, we're, yeah. we care so much, you know, we got our feelings hurt, 
right? Um, yeah. I just, oh. I think this, this whole, this whole movement that you have going, it's going to help so many people, Jody. You and I, um, just reconnecting with you has been such a blessing to yeah, my life. And I know. our, my mom is so happy that we reconnected from heaven. Right? I know. <laughs> Hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I think the think the goal is just to keep pressing forward. I've had been crushed in church wounds where I've almost walked away and yeah. then finally just said, Okay, God, if 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 I had nothing, if you stripped me from everything, I'm gonna decide that you're enough. Mm -hmm. And that was the turning point where it was like God stopped being a vending machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I it was not that. about what I could get like, you know, but talk to, to uh, b before we close, I want you to tell people a, if they're considering recovery, um, just some encouragement, why they should just take that step, any type of recovery, or maybe check out celebrate recovery and then let people know briefly what you do, your financial uh, business and how they can get in touch with you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, I would just say if you're even considering it, the answer is yes. That means you get yeah. to do it, whatever that looks like for we you. We always say that. Because God would not plant those thoughts in your heart if he didn't expect you to follow through with them. Um, you know, my practice, we are, we are on a mission to create a tribe of seven-figure givers. Um, I find many believers have a passion for giving and you can yeah. either make more or spend less. And I know firsthand that most families just get to make more. So we teach families how to create their own economy, um, embrace the principles of entrepreneurship, which Jesus was the best entrepreneur and recruiter on the planet. Talk about a business builder, yes. right? Just just yeah. recruited 12 and then it's you know created this movement, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I, I believe in raising the financial IQ of women and our children, especially because we're gonna yeah. we're gonna possess two thirds of the wealth by 2030, and mo oh, there's a lot of women that are not prepared for that. Um, I host a series of workshops; they're free. You can find us at Lisa Williams Co. We have um, a monthly workshop, and the goal of that is just to uh, just to do what I just shared is help women get smart about money, help their families, We're not teaching our kiddos things about money in school. Yeah. So we get to think differently. The kingdom way of creating wealth. Um, and be watching for our, yeah. our, my next book, which is Kingdom Wealth Creators, which is coming out in November. Nice, Kingdom Wealth Creators. And I love how what Lisa does because it's so, it's Christ-centered, it's very different. It's like, oh, you're gonna get rich, you know, I'm gonna make you get rich, you know, or whatever. It's, you know, it's just, it's not like that because it's not, it's different from the world. So, uh, what's your website? Did you give your, or do you Lisa, have a website? LisaWilliamsCo.com. Okay, yeah. awesome. Lisa, thank you so much for coming on and just being vulnerable and sharing your hurts, habits, hangups, and recovery too. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. I love you. Have a blessed day. I love you too. Thank you so much, friends, for listening to Genuine Life Recovery, playing on your favorite app or on my website at jodystevens.org. It's J-O-D-I-E-S-T-E-V-E-N-S, jodystevens.org. There you can check out my podcast, blog, recovery coaching info, speaking, and more. Check it out.